just for going through the particular hyperledger composer so this is my localhost if you see this is localhost 8080 login and you would be able to look into this so i have all the different networks in my blockchain so this is the tutorial network and this is the only networks my business networks that i already have so to create a new business card you just deploy a new business network over here click on that and it would be asking you what are the different things that you need so if you see here basic sample network basic sample network and i can give a trade network so first of all for a business if you set up a name so i am giving it as trade network and give the net network admin card that will be created a name so you should always have an admin for each and every network so for best practice we give it as like this admin at trade network this is up to you you can give any name so you can just they have all these samples so you have trade network as well let's just give deploy and we have this trade network once you have this admin trade network then you need to create a business card network business card so when you create a network business card it would ask you whether to have a particular admin card or we have a peer admin card so this peer admin card would be used to create other admins so that is what is this okay so this is just a network admin let me see if i can connect from here so they have this kind of bug over here where you can all click on this connect now right now on the ui side so let me just show you through the particular commands so there are particularly basically five to six commands we have to actually do after the creation of this using a developer network so the first thing that we do is creating a business network structure so in this case we use this using yaman package you should create a directory first so for now i'll show you a food supply chain where you have a pizza on a blockchain saying that this pizza you will get to know from where it travel and how does it reach the customer so we will just do a pizza network kind of thing first let's take me in this trade network first you should create a folder using trade network and then you create your hyperledger composer business network okay so i'm going to a new tab and i'm giving i'm creating a new folder saying is an example okay now we copy this we do this your hyperledger composer business network over here so when you give this it actually since that it should create a new business network and it would it would ask you for all the possible inputs that it need so the first thing is the business network name that it needs so we say this is a network description this is a manufacturer author name and you give the email the license the namespace so namespace is very important each and every time you give and each and every time you should have a separate namespace for all the networks so it would ask you whether you want to generate an empty template network or you should pop it at sample one we'll go for sample one so that we know where to replace what and understand better so if you see now it has created different files inside this C P Z A network and all the different files. Package dot JSON permissions dot ACL files that I have been talking about. 
So now what we do, we have to go and edit this model files, the model file and the CTO file and the Java transcript file, transaction file, and then access control file. So I'll be just going here. This is the Visual Studio code that I've been using, the editor. Now you go here, you open the folder, and you say, pizza test. Yep, pizza example. So you have this pizza network inside here, and you have these models. This is the file. That is a default file right now. And this is the particular JavaScript file. And then we have the permission plus ACL file. So all the files are present here actually. And now if you see, I'll go to the model file. I'll explain as I explained previously, the namespace is present. And this is a sample kind of an uh, sample kind of a network that's been generated already by the Hyperledger Composer. But for us, we'll do a food supply chain network now saying this is the identifier, this is the particular no wholesaler, retailer, the participant as a consumer. So the first thing that we have to do is the particular model file. So once we have the model file over here, first thing that we have to write is an entity. Entity is nothing but a kind of a person. That is, uh, instead of whether a factory guy or a retailer guy, so we, we design them as an entity. Okay, so he is a participant in the particular network. So what we do, first thing is that we should create a participant So the first thing is we should create a participant and then we should give the name that is the name that we think entity and then we should give the identification identified by we'll give it as entity id the entity shiri should be always present inside the particular thing that is inside the definition of that so we are going to have the ID as a string. So if you see, we have, we have an asset ID and we'll give it as entity ID. So the entity for the pizza is done, that is entity. Now we should go for the pizza, okay? That is e each one of them has a pizza ID, that is the pizza is asset in the network. So we'll give asset pizza identified by the pizza id and then we have this string for this as pizza id now we can take the state of that pizza and then we can even have the time And we can even have the date as the well, timestamp date. And then we should know who is the kind of owner for this. So once you have the kind of sample participant that is the entity in our case, we should say that entity, entity is the owner for that pizza at that time. So in this case, it would be entity. So entity would be the owner for this. Now, 
there are four stages for each and every food supply chain in my case the food ca the first case is change production and it would be freezing packaging and then distribution so production first that is a transaction okay and change to freezing is a transaction and putting into packaging is a transaction and then changing into distribution is a transaction so these are four different types of transactions and transactions are assembled by the word as transaction now we give transaction change state to production so this is the transaction name now what we are going to transact actually is nothing but the pizza and i am going to give a particular reference name for this as smaller one that's it so this is one transaction that we are looking at that is pizza is been productionized right now that is ready for production and then now we are going to freeze it so we are going to change this change to freezing similarly we will be having another transaction saying it has to be packaged right now for distribution and then we are doing package and then we'll keep it as distribution as the final stage distribution okay so now we should have another transaction and as change owner so each and every time you should change the owner of the pizza because it has been traveling from one hands to another hands and we have to change the owner of it so change owner is a transaction and now you should give a relationship for what you are changing there is nothing but the pizza so once the change has been happening you should know who is the new owner it's not that you should always have the old owner for it so the new owner is ntt you give the name and you give it as new owner so this is how it is actually the transaction file that is the model file is ready for the pizza network you have four stages production freezing packaging distribution and you have an owner for each and every pizza the first one would be different ones i'll show you that now the next thing that we have to do is to the logic so each and every transaction that you have written should execute over here using a logic so that is how we do this kind of logic so if you see we have pizza test as the namespace and you have a sample transaction but we don't have a sample transaction in here city of so each and every time a logic will change when you try to do it it will show an error so every logic should be written over there previously and that's why we use this javascript over here so now what you need to do we need to go to the particular logic.js and then first thing that we have to go to do is the change of production so each and everything when we do is a kind of an parameters that has been written before so when you have this pizza test you do this one as change to production is a transaction these parameters are very important because it is being used to identify what is a function about that is how your function is being done so now i'll be having a transaction change state to production and this tx is nothing but a transaction that are doing so we'll be removing this one now what we are going to do we are going to set the new pizza state that's it so tx dot you need to remember the reference that we had tx dot pizza that it will actually go and it will set this state of that particular thing so we are going to do a transaction on pizza and the state as production and the api that i was telling you about the runtime api that the fabric sdk gives us is this one so if you see this get asset registry is nothing but the asset that has been registered would be given to us in this namespace
pizza test dot then this is using javascript so use dot then whenever you use a function kind of thing you give a function and then give a asset registry saying we are registering an asset saying the particular thing that has been updated over here so inside that what is that you are trying to register and what is that you are going to return return is nothing but returning the asset registry we are going to update it by using the transaction yeah so this is just one logic that we have written this is for production now we need to for four the states that is freezing and then packaging and then distribution and then change owner so we have this four different types of things so we can just copy this out and do another one saying here it would be change to freezing so everything would be same only the names change over here change state to freezing change state to freezing yeah and here it would be freezing and then similarly we'll be having another one as production for packaging so if you see each and every transaction we have a separate logic written here that is the main thing we have to write separate functions for each and every logic and then we have packaging and here we should do packaging done and then we should have a distribution Now all the transaction of pizza is done. Now we are going to look into the transaction of change owner. So each and every time a pizza gets moved from one thing, one factory to another, it goes through an owner process where it has to change. So in that case, we should actually do an owner change function. So we'll be having change owner. So the changing the owner is not the state. So we give pizza the owner state and the transaction we get to know the new owner. That's it. That's good to go. So the logic is ready now. All the transactions are written over here in the CTO file is being implemented in the logic.js. Now we go into the permissions file and then we just look and stick with the same existing kind of models that we can give. But for this case, we need to actually give permissions to the particular user. So in our case, we have this sample participant. We don't have sample participant. We have an entity. So we give entity over here. And then similarly, we don't have sample participant. We have an entity. Oh. And similarly, we don't have a sample transaction as well. Because these are all default values. We should give the actual resource that we are going to let them help, let them use us. So, In this case, it would be actually having different kinds of, you know, permissions called ACL. So we should create a particular thing. This one would be pizza, no sample track section resources pizza. He's able to submit to create a pizza. And for this one, 
me see I already have a permissions file I'll just paste them and then explain it to you yep so in this case if you see we have this entity entity and then entity similarly we have for the resource pizza and for system ACL we have this particular pizza and network admin if you never touch this this network admin is always the same and even the network admin system is always the same you can change that all anything else you can change so if you see entity can change state to production is an entity that can change state to production similarly entity that can state for freezing so I'm creating create operation each and every time but in this case network it's all because admin has the access to all the operations that he has so now the business network is ready with three different files now the next step that we are going to look is used to create a business network archive file So once you have this, what you should do, you should actually create a business network archive file based on this. So for that thing, you should actually go into the network like this and just do a composer archive file like this. It will create a directory. Okay, so this one, what you saying? So if you see, I just created a composer. So the piece on the blockchain that we did, and it just create at a particular binary file. So this one. Is 0 0.011, 0 0.0.2, so this is the second one. So how do we do this? How do we create this particular thing? is based on an easy example based on the package.json so if you see this one we have something known as package.json and similarly in hyperledger composer you cannot delete a particular network if you have any fault in your business logics you should upgrade to the next one so when upgrading to a next one by default the version is 00.0.1 but when you want to upgrade to the next version, you should get a 0.0.2. That is the main thing in the particular business networks that you have. So it will upgrade to the latest data that we have. Now, once you have this Hypologer Composer created, what you should do, you should actually So we should actually compose network and install the network on the peer admin. So what? how do we do that? You should have a peer admin network that you already have a peer admin card as I told you in fabric dev server, if you remember. And now we have this network file. Okay, so let's do this. I'll go to this and I'm going to the fabric dev servers. Now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna install A particular network so compose or install I'm giving the archival file location you should give the location of the file okay so composer network install I have all these in the particular document that I have so you don't worry you will get all the documents that you need in this case so if you see this Composer Network install, you're having an option as card. Card is nothing but the peer admin card. And you're installing that over the Composer Network using the archival file that we created, the blockchain 0.0.2.bna, the business network archival. Now I give enter. 
So the command has been succeeded. It has successfully installed the network. So once the network is being installed, now what do you need to do? You need to actually create an admin for the network, right? So that's how it's been used. So you should create a network admin for this network and then use it on your network volcan. So I'll just give this. So you should change the network name whenever you come over here. So this is success, and we have created the admin as well. Now you see we have an admin card as well. When you have this in the network, it creates an admin card. And now what we need to do, we need to ping it. So how do we ping? We need to check whether this particular card is working or not on that particular network. So you should give composer network ping. Admin at user or blockchain. So this is the validation that the particular admin card is working or not. Yes, so it is working. If you see the business network version is 0.0.2, composer runtime version, the participant is a network admin, and you have an identity. This is the identity. This has is your identity URL each and every time you get. So once you have this, now you should be ready to run it. You have your network installed. You have your admin card created. Now your composer should be ready to give you a REST service. As I told you, compose a REST server that actually creates a particular you know, APIs for you. So I give compose a REST server. Now it would ask you the name of the business network card to use. So in our case, it should be admin at the rate piece on the blockchain because you're going to give the admin business network card. OK, and it would ask you to specify if you want the namespace in the generator REST API. You should give never use namespaces right now. And if you want to secure the REST API. So the API key to secure on this would be no because you're using it in development phase. But if you want to productionize it, you want to secure the APIs, yes. And this one would be no, yes, and then yes. Yeah, so we have given Explorer test interface is the one I have been telling you about creating those Explorer and the APIs for the Hyperledger. And then we have enable authentication as no, and even even publication is there as well. And even we'll enable no for TLS security because we are using a local, we don't need any security purposes right now. Now the APIs are ready. So I'll just open link. So we could see the different things. Transaction name, change owner, change state of distribution, change state of freezing, change state of packaging, production, entity, pizza, system. Got it? Now I click on entity. So it gives you all the things. Get, post, get, head, put, delete. Now entity is nothing but file only model instances. So I just come here, I give write out. So there is no entity right now. So let me create an entity. So here we have all the examples that we need. So for example, now if I create an entity, entity is nothing but an owner. So it asks me for name. I'm giving my name as an entity. Yep, so we have created an entity. Now we go to the get call and call it, you get the response body as entity as Ashok. So we have these different entities and we can have an pizza. So you get the different pizzas that are available. So once you post your pizza has been stored in the ledger based on the class, the pizza ID, the timestamp, date, state, and the owner of the pizza. All right. So for now, if you can give me it as
So the ID we can give it as chicken pizza. Timestamp that I've been started is 12.14. The date is around. Nineteenth August. Let's say the state is production, and I have the owner as my name. Yep. So we are created on pizza right now. So we'll get just do a get pizza, and then we'll see what are the pizzas available actually. So you can see it has created a pizza and the production and resource of dot me dot business dot entity is Ashok. So I know the entity is me. It has created an entity that has been referring to that pizza right now. So this is the Hyperledger Composer REST server that's actually running at 3000 port. Now, if you want to create a particular skeleton UI that I've been talking about previously, you can use this one. This your hyperledger compose or angular so we'll be ready to create a particular so it gives a angular name description author email license so we give admin at pizza on the blockchain so this will ask you for different things like the main main thing that you need to see is the name of the business unit card and the project name that you give is everything it's okay do you want to come to a running business network yes and name of the business network card you should give it as admin now you want to generate or connect so we are going to connect because we already generated the rest api and it would be localhost as of now if you have it in a server you can use the server ip over here and it's 3000 now name spaces are not used so let's see how does it create a skeleton structure of us? So it will be creating all the skeleton structure that you need based on the overall transactions that you have. But still, I have a Python Flask framework available. I'll be showing you that as well. But first, let's see how does this work, the Angular app. They have the skeleton structure to create this UI for the blockchain. So it will take some time to create this Angular app as well. So first you should go into the Tangler app and just give npm start. So I just went to the Angular app that the name that we gave for the app. 
and just give npm start so that's the command to start the actual uh, ui And now you go into the local host 4200. Let's see what does it show. So if you see this is the Angular wrap that's been automatically generating. You have a pizza. It's been saying you can create an asset over here. The, uh, the APIs that you use over there you can be used over here. You can create a participant over here. And you can change the state for each and everything. Change state to production, everything. So this is one kind of Angular wrap that's being generated automatically without doing any coding and stuff. You can just show this as your proof of concept for the blockchain. So let me just close this. And now let me show my UI that I've been creating for better understanding. Yep. So if you see, this is welcome to the pizza on the blockchain. Now we have four different entities right now, factory, wholesaler, retailer, customer. Now I go to a factory and now the state is in production. Okay, now I choose a pizza, I state as production, and I give a submit. So one of the transaction is done. Let me see if I can show you what is the thing that we can show. Yep. So once you see, I have changed it, transfer the ownership of the pizza state to a particular wholesaler. Now it comes to wholesaler. Similarly, I can change the pizza state as well. Now I'll choose the pizza state as freezing. And I'll give a submit. So if you see the current status will be changing to submit, I'll give a transfer of ownership again. So now you see the productionized pizza has been gone to wholesaler. Now I transfer the pizza moving from wholesaler to retailer. Now I'm the retailer now. So now I get to know that retailer is one of the transaction right now. Now I get to go to transfer ownership. Customer. So this is the customer view. Customer gets to know from what time till what time he is able to get the delivery from the retailer to the customer. So wholesaler, factory, retailer, customer, everything. So customer is able to understand the full flow of the pizza on the blockchain saying, this is the time it got created and this is the time it's in my hands. So is it very good to use? Yes. So is it not expired? Yes. He will be able to do all the transparency checks that he needs. And the communication between the factory, wholesaler and the retailer is also easy right now because of the particular transactions and the shared ledger they have for each and everything in the UI they have. So these are the transaction IDs for each and every state, which cannot be immutable. And for checking out the details in your DB, you can just go to Fort Localhost 5984 utils. This is the particular thing that you will be using for CouchDB. It is automatically installed. So if you see Composer Channel, please on the blockchain. And I will be able to see all the different assets that I've been creating. The blockchain itself in the pizza kind of the database itself. I'll be able to know each and everything which cannot be altered or immutable. That's the main process of this. So this is a simple blockchain having a pizza. That is a food supply, I'll be saying mostly. And next one, I'll be showing a complicated one where we have vehicle manufacturing network as I showed you in the PPT is the demo. 
we'll be showing a vehicle manufacture network instead of the piece of blockchain. So, uh, kind of, do you guys have any, what do we say, any questions on this piece on the blockchain so that I will be able to explain better clearer in the next demo? Yeah, Nurag. Ah, proceed for the next demo, sir. Vehicle registration. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, sir. I think I can increase the font size. Let me see. So, so these are the five key concepts that we have to do before creating a business network definition. One is creating a business network using this command, your hypology or composer business network. You do the changes in the model file, you do the changes in the transaction file, you do changes in the permissions file, and now you should create a binary archive, composer archive create, and then you should do a network install of your binary archive file, and then you should start the network. And then compose a card, you should create an admin card, you should ping, and you should create a server. So these are just five to six simple steps. Once you create the business network, you get the blockchain ready. And then you create an UI based on what you like it. Or you can create a general skeleton UI using your mind. So let me just show you now the vehicle manufacture thing that I was telling you about. I'm not sure whether I have an option to increase the font size okay double tap on screen to zoom yeah just try double tapping once whether you can zoom in okay so the first thing it's the same thing so we create a business network now i'll explain you a bit about So, in our case, we have a network known as org.ace.me.vehicle. Now, this that is something known as concept. Concept is nothing but an abstract class. So, if you have already kind of things, an abstract class where you can actually just define it previously and use it and extend it anywhere else you need. So you can say if you have concept of vehicle details, I need a manufacturer who can make it. And then I'm just giving a string as a model type. Make is something that I give automatically. That's not any keyword kind of thing. So this manufacturer is already defined. It's as a relation. Now, abstract participant, similarly companies identified by company ID. And participant is a person in our case. It's being identified by the username. Okay. And we have a participant manufacturer that extends the company. So a manufacturer is nothing but a company, but he has a company name and an ID, all right? And this ENUM is enumerated order status. So what is enumerated? Enumerated is nothing but an array. So you have four or five different values, placed, scheduled for manufacture, the VIN assigned, owner assigned, and then we have delivered. So these are the five different things that are when a vehicle gets placed in the schedule for manufacture and the VIN is nothing but a vehicle ID, owner assigned for that vehicle and you have it delivered to the owner now the concept of this what do we have in a vehicle we have the trim we have the interiors we have exteriors these are some options that we provide to the users so i'm just giving concept as an abstract class and options 
So an order is being identified by an order ID. <coughs> what does the order ID contain? It contains vehicle details. Okay, it contains order status, it contains options, and the person who is going to order is known as the orderer. So person is a relation from an order to a person. Okay, and what he's gonna do, he's gonna order. So I'm just giving this name as order. Transaction. Now all the asset participants has been defined. Now we have to give in particular transaction for that. So once he places an order, what does he need? He needs a string of an order ID, the vehicle details, and options such as trim, whether he needs some interior, whether he needs some extras kind of to do a manufacture. And he has a place order event. He has to place that order. And we have a transaction again, update order status if he wants to update it. Kind of, you know, updating that order for the user. So you have order status, you have an order of an vehicle ID because it is optional. First time you won't be able to update as it is manufactured. Second time you'll be having the vehicle ID, so it is optional. So second time we would pass that and then we will send it. So optional, it's nothing we give it as, uh, what do we say, whether it is an optional parameter or not, kind of a default parameter that we have in other languages. Now we have update order status event and then we have participant regulator extends company. So now we have a regulator that is nothing but the RTO kind of thing in India where we have to register a vehicle. So he goes from the company, gets to know that the vehicle has been manufactured for this owner and the vehicle state is active off the road or scrapped. Okay. And always a vehicle is being identified with the asset as vehicle ID. And then we have vehicle details and vehicle status, person owner is optional. And then that's it for the kind of CTO file that is asset participants, concepts, and enumerators. These are the four different things that we need to identify in this. So each and every business at work would be having these kinds of, you know, numerous organizations or numerous kind of uh, attributes. For example, if you take a bank account, you'll be having bank ID, bank name, bank value, bank account balance, and you know, bank uh, user ID, the UPI ID. These are all different strings that you need to take care. But you should have another participant as a person who will be related to this, saying he is a person, and the person will be having an email ID and the username and a password. So those kind of things need to be taken care of each and every time you create a model file. Now, for every transaction, we should write a logic, right? Now we have a logic file. Similarly, he's going to place an order first thing. I'm going to get the request. Okay. So we have a get factory method. We have the namespace defined. So this request is nothing but a new order. So we're going to give factory dot new resource. So we'll give namespace pass the order and the order request dot order ID. We'll get the order ID from the particular UI that we create. And order request dot vehicle details. You'll we'll stay the order status as placed as is the default one for the first time. And now we'll get to know the person in the identifier. So once you want to know the identifier, you should use order request dot order dot get identifier. That is how you need to do it for making it an identifiable by person for that order. Now you go that get asset registry that we use. Okay. And we just add that order into that database. And now we have a new event, placed order event, and just create an event using these details. This is just creating a place order and adding the order to the TB. Now we want to update it each and every time a particular thing happens. Like if you want to get a manufacturing done, if you want to be having the vehicle number assigned, you need to update it. So what we need to do, you have to separate update order status. You have the same thing used, but here the namespace will be changing with the vehicle kind of thing because each and every time it will be changing to update or something else based on the namespace. But since this case we have the same thing, it's not a problem. But in the order status, you can say whether it is VIN assigned, then update that particular order. Whether it is kind of an other thing, owner assigned, you should update that or so you should update this order based on each and every time because a company doesn't do all the same things at the same time. Manufacture happens first for the car and then you get it through the owner assigned and then you go it through the regulations. That's why we use this update order request dot VIN and the vehicle status now is active. From placed, we have moved it to active. And the same thing, the new relationship from the person and we use the username now saying that we update the, the vehicle has been active to the username. 
for that person the order id is getting updated each and every time so i have created a function on a setup demo saying uh, these are the different kind of uh, people that i can use so you can just do an name change and you can just remove you can just have these different cars and different things that you can use now what did we say we just need to insert them so we just create a new resource each and every time a regulator a pda and a manufacturer the namespace is always same as we have defined it previously and now if you, if you do this for now for the manufacturer each time each and everything would be registered in the all the vehicle section so this is just the logic for this is this is only this is only the logic you once you get start writing this code you will find it easy to understand how do we do it because the transactions are just two to three transactions and then it will get updated each and every time now the permissions part for the permissions you should have a person who is making an order the vehicle dot person and the resource that he can order is only order he can only create an order okay based on identifier Similarly, person read read order. He can only read those order because I'm giving here read. You see, the operation is getting different. Operation is here is create. So each and every time we create a rule, manufacturer is updating the order. We give the operation as update. He can only update. He cannot even create or he cannot read. He can only update that particular thing. But if you want to update order status, he can create and he can read the status as well because he wants to know the status and then update it. Or you want to create a new status saying it has been placed or it has been delivered. those kind of things similarly participant c selves so if a participant is being coming into inside he is getting it he is getting to see all the different things that he has ordered for and the regulated admin user is now we are giving a regulated admin user so if you see the regulated admin user is admin rt who gets to know all the details of the uh, card that or the transaction that has been happening so he will be able to see all of them as same as the admin can see what all the transaction is happening from creating a card placing a card and then going through registering the vehicle owner as well creating read order so these are different kind of permissions that each and every rule should be given for each and every user so now if you see we already have the bna file or else i can show them by creating the same thing so we have the maple manufacturer again i'll start it so now what we need to do we need to first create the composer we already have the composer file archive okay now i need to install it based on the directory so let me just do it composer network install and i'm going to give it at vehicle manufacturer vehicle network so now i install the file okay now i'm going to start it using the network name vehicle, vehicle network is my network name that i have given so i'm using the admin card to start the network right now so that admin card has been successful now i'm going to ping and check whether the admin card is working for that vehicle network yes the network admin card is working and if you see the network admin card for this one is different 
for the vehicle network as you see previously we had different hash thing and business network version for now it is 0.0.1 but if i want to upgrade some new business rules and new data or new participant creating a new uh, another thing like if it goes for bikes instead of car i create a new change in the code then i give a network version of 0.0.2 and create an uh, panel fail of 0.0.2 by updating the package.json if you see the package.json here here i should update instead of 1 i'll give 2 and then i will create a binary file and then it will be coming as 0.0.2 so i should change everywhere to 0.0.2 instead of 1 so that's how we maintain the versioning instead of you not know, deleting the whole thing and then doing it you should maintain the versioning of each and every changes you do so it is asking me the business network okay so remember what we need to give here let me add the vehicle network now never use namespace and api key to secure not now no and we need to explore test interface yes dynamic logging and we give yes real security no so if you see this one is ready the transaction setup demo i can post this So let's see if we have a manufacturer. Yep. So we have manufacturers like AVM, Morde, which, okay. And let's see if we have a person who is the participants. Participants are nothing but the consumers or the customers for them. So we have like eight to five uh, customers, and. can create those customers as well and now let's see if we have some vehicle yep so there's been vehicles for them like this now if you want you can create a particular yoman skeleton network but let me show my ui like kind of using node js i just created it so that it's easy for you guys to understand i have each ui for each and every one like one is for manufacturing one is for the um customer and one is for the regulator the first thing let me show you it's for the customer so this is the customer ui okay let's design your car he comes over here he goes to select which one of the cars he need medium thanos or nebula kind of thing let's build and we go for trim whether you need standard or free the color i would go with inferno red and the interior papyrus whether we need some extras you remember these are the options that we gave in the cto file so we are just given this now we gives a place order okay so this is the identity for this one and he has given order received he has given the date this is a manufacturer via an assigned owner issue because of shared ledger he is able to see what is happening in the manufacturer the whether it is assigned or whether the owner is issued for that okay and now once this is done now we go to the manufacturing portal once he places an order the manufacturing factory gets to know about what is the fact what is the order that he has given so he has given adm nebula Okay, and 19th August, and this order received. Now I just click Start Manufacture. So the order has been received and been starting to manufacture, and it will be starting to update even the clients. You see here, manufacturing has been started over here with 41 seconds. So once this is all being done, these are all regulated by the RTO, where he gets to know what is the different things that is happening. So he gets to know here. So if you see, this is well for to do the order that we place right now, saying the no, Paul has placed an order. Now Arium, who is the manufacturer, he is getting to know all the different states. He is updating each and every status. So these are the transaction IDs that cannot be changed. So one thirty one forty one. These are different transactions. Now manufacturing. Let's see. Oh great. 
all the shipping has been done he has been done so this will take a lot of time in the actual scenarios because because they will be doing one by one and updating it over here now user gets to know manufacturing done vin done owner issued and it's been delivered as well so that's simple it is because of the ledger shared between these three different things no one needs to get updated nothing is being kind of you know uh, kind of untransparent everything is transparent that it's happening and it's actually happening and there is no tampering of data as well we get to know what is the actual user trying to do what is the actual manufacturing happening instead of trying off and doing an middleman cost saving that cost doing a middleman who is trying to operate and connect between the builder the customer and even the regulator there may be some data inconsistency data loss but in this case there's nothing happening everything is secured without tampered and easy to use and if another user comes he gives a second order some bus orange interior bedroom and i give extras as this one I give a place order again i come to manufacturer you see this one is done this is a new one adm nova and again i give start manufacturer so if you see here it gets updated one by one again paul has placed an order now this is getting updated a new transaction id 145 a new transaction id 146 he is updating each and every order for the seven and he gets no it's been assigned and done now in the couch tv will be able to see the vehicle network and each and everything gets updated over here you'll be able to see each and one of them he is able to say whether what is happening the asset for that the vehicle options interior paper standard everything is in the database with the particular id and it's been encrypted as well but not not in this kind of things but in the particular document that you see but in case of productions you won't be able to access the database because only the admin can where's the full access rights for that database and then if you see the owner has been issued to bin assigned for two register vehicles are two you'll get to know the transaction ids the time stamp and everything and everything is under control once you have it and anyone out of the network cannot even do it for just logging in and just you have to create a membership you have to get the identity done and then you should do the particular manufacturing of the car so this is a simple kind of uh example to show how does it work between the manufacturer the customer and the regulator with an automated process with a no middleman and everything is transparent for the customer as well yep i think that's it for the demo actually so i had two kind of things one for food supply chain one for the car like manufacturing so i think it's time for questions